to the top of this file and look for number two. So previously we said that a class defines methods. We just defined a couple of methods, um, or at least we declared the methods. We still have to like do the implementation, uh, but we'll get to that. But a class also defines what are the attributes for all objects of that class? What are the class, at, uh, the class attributes here? Um, in Java, this concept of attributes is what we refer to as instance variables. Okay? Um, so again, in the context of turtle, attributes would be things like X position, Y position, pen color, et cetera. So we're gonna define the instance variables for our mileage tracker class. So we need to um, think about what data do we need to store so that we can perform the functions of this class, which is to report on the fuel efficiency. How many miles per gallon is the car getting? Um, so how, how do we do that? When we define instance variables, what does that look like? Well, we specify three things for each instance variable. So let's, let's spell those out. Um, some of this will be similar to methods. We start by specifying the visibility. Visibility. For instance variables, it is almost always private. This connects back to that principle of encapsulation from yesterday, where we say a class encapsulates its data. And the way it encapsulates its data is by making the instance variables private. So no other code elsewhere outside of this class can directly access those instance variables. So that's super important. Um, I suppose it's worth actually defining public and private. I didn't do that earlier. Public means accessible by any code in any class. Private means only accessible by methods in this class, meaning the mileage tracker class. So that's what public and private means. In general, our methods are public and almost always our instance variables are private. The second thing we specify is the type of the instance variable. We specify the type. Um, what the type could be an int, it could be a double. Those are primitive types. It could be a string, it could be a class type. That's fine. And then we specify the name of the instance variable. For example, um, one of our instance variables is gonna be called distance driven. Another one is gonna be called VIN, uh, the vehicle identification number. These three things, visibility, type, and name, are similar, the visibility not so much, but the type and the name should be similar from like, hey, this is how we declared regular old local variables in the previous unit. Um, so I wanna just, before we start writing more code, let's compare and contrast the difference between instance variables, which is what we're defining now, and local variables, which is what we wrote previously. So here's the key differences. Instance variables differ from local variables, variables in the following ways. All right, here are the key things. An instance variable is useful because it is an object's attribute. And, and the reason what that means is it is scoped, scoped to the class. That means it is accessible in all methods of the class and it's lifetime, and I'll define that term in a second, lifetime is the same as the object. What I mean by scope, and what, when we use the word scope in computer science, we mean where is this thing accessible? Where is this thing valid? Where does this thing exist? An instance variable can be accessed from any method in this class when it's private. Um, so it's, it's accessible for all the methods. In addition, when we store a value in an instance variable, that value is remembered for the lifetime of the object. In fact, that's the whole point of it being an attribute. When we set the pen color on a turtle, the turtle doesn't forget that information after we call some other method. Um, it will have that pen color until we change it, right? That's what we mean by its lifetime is the same as the object. 
till we get rid of that turtle, it's gonna have that same pen color. That's what instance variables are so useful for. Um, other cha changes. With local variables, we learned last unit that we had to initialize them at some point. Maybe not right away when we declared them, but at some point we had to assign them a value. That's not true of instance variables. Instance variables are automatically initialized to a default value. And that default value depends upon the type of the instance variable. For like instant doubles, it gets initialized to zero. For Booleans, it gets initialized to false. And for any class type, it gets a special value called null. What null means is that instance variable just doesn't refer to an object yet. It has no reference. We haven't created the object yet. That's what null means, just no object. Usually when we create local variables and we declare them, we initialize them right away. With instance variables, we can, but it's best practice not to. So here's another difference. Best practice is not to immediately initialize instance variables. Why that is, is a little bit hard to explain right now. So this is one of those like, trust me for now things, verify later. Um, and we're gonna see, well, where do we initialize them? We're gonna get to that next. First, um, let's, this class is gonna have three instance variables. There's three attributes we want the mileage tracker object to have. So let's declare all of them. So we start with visibility almost always gonna be private for an instance variable. Um, the first one is distance driven, and we're gonna store that as an integer value, and then we call it distance driven. And then I like to add, if it's applicable, I like to add a little inline comment or end of the line comment here, specifying the unit for my own reference. This is in units of miles. What else do we need to keep track of? We need to know how far we drove and we need to know how much fuel is consumed. So we're gonna keep track of that too as an int. And so we're gonna have an instance variable called fuel consumed. And that's gonna be in units of gallons. And the last thing we're gonna keep track of, this isn't so much needed to calculate the miles per gallon, it's needed more to keep track of one car and distinguish it from other cars. Every car has a, in the world, probably, at least in the US, has a unique identifier called the vehicle identification number. And so we're gonna keep track of that. And that's a string. I know it says number, but there's like letters in it. So we're gonna store it as a string. We're gonna call that VIN. And that's the vehicle identification. These are three instance variables. 